welcome back to Extra Innings with Caleb. As always, I'm your boy Caleb Rosario. Before we start this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, push this channel out to however many people you can, man. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Season starts this week. As of right now, this is Monday that we're recording. Thursday is opening day for all your Major League Baseball clubs, man, and more specifically, your Philadelphia Phillies. Um, man, this is a uh, this is something I've been waiting for, and we've all been waiting for as Phillies fans. Um, no, this is not an Astros hat. I begin that question a lot. Is this Astros hat? No, it isn't. This is All Star Baseball Academy out here in New Jersey. This isn't all the Astros? But you know, there's a lot of stuff we gotta cover, man. Um, I was under the weather for a little bit. That's why it took me a couple, a few days to get some, uh, to get a video out there. But uh, I kind of wanted to wait too for the week of uh, opening day, so there's more kind of, I guess you could say, storylines. Obviously, that whole Tani thing that's happening right now. That's one thing that we can cover. But um, you know, later on, a later date. But as of right now, Phillies, man, Phillies just finished up their spring training today. They are heading to Philadelphia tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, and getting ready for their opener, their home opener against the uh, the Braves. Um, we're going to start off with that. The notion that the Braves are this powerhouse over the Phillies, that the Phillies don't really have a chance to win the division, that... Is the discussion is do we want to win the division or are we do, do we feel more comfortable playing in the wild card because it's worked out for us the last couple of years? No, that right there is a discussion that we want. I want to start with. No, we do not want the wild card. We want the division. Just because the Dodgers and the Braves it hasn't worked out for them and their managers are complaining that that layoff is killing them does not mean that Phillies fans should be okay with coming in second place or being okay with being the five seed. And walking into the wild card and having to go play a team like that in the first round. No. Just because we've beaten the Braves two times does not mean that we're going to continue to beat the Braves every single time. And that doesn't mean we're going to get the Braves every single time in the NLDS. No. There's teams that are that at any point can beat the Phillies. Just like we can beat any single team, especially in the postseason. Now, the whole notion that... Yeah, we want the wild card, man. It's worked out for us. You know, that layoff could hurt. No, you just don't execute. The Braves hasn't, haven't executed against the Phillies. Why would you not want the division and be able to set up your rotation? You get four days off, be able to set up your rotation. You get your guys some rest that may need it, that may be slumping a little bit heading into the playoffs. You get them a couple days off, a little break. And then you got first game against maybe the three of another team. Just like in 2022. Game one against the Braves, after we beat the Cardinals two days in a row, Wheeler, Nola went those first two games against St. Louis because they needed to. Ranger Suarez was the game one starter against the Braves. Now, Ranger Suarez has been one of the best postseason pitchers. The numbers prove it. His ERA is under one in the postseason. But that doesn't mean that it's a recipe for success to have your three pitcher against the team's ace. That is not a recipe for success. I'm telling you right now, like, why would you not want to have your one against their one? That's what competitors should want. You know what I mean? So that whole that whole thing is 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 weird to me. That whole thing is weird to me that no no no, let's just back into the wild card. What? Why why what's the point of playing playing hard the entire season? Why do you not, what is the whole point of talking about the division? What was that what was that whole run that the Phillies went on from 2007 to 2011? That they won a division every single year. What was that about then? You think that was that didn't mean anything to them? You think they won? Like obviously, I know that rule has been in play for two years, and it's kind of it benefited us in 2022 because we were the sixth seed. We basically just backed ourselves into the postseason and then I'm going on a run. That doesn't happen. You want to be the one seed. You want to have be the first two teams, one of the first two teams to be able to get a bye and rest a couple days. Why would you not want that? You're getting home games anyway. We had to go on the road in 2022 against St. Louis and then against the Braves. We didn't get a home game until game three of the NLDS. We played four straight games on the road to start the postseason. Went three and one. That's not a recipe for success, man. It's it really not. I don't, I don't understand a lot. Of, uh, it's just mind-blowing to me why any Phillies fan or any baseball fan in general would want their team just not, to not win a division. Because it's because it, it hurts you in NFL when a team. What's the point of playing for that number one seed so you can get that bye? What's the point of that? So you can rest your team, so you can get a little break before the postseason. You can get a home game immediately. You're one game already from the from that uh, from the NFC Championship game. Why don't you not want to cut off wins off the bat? You don't even have to play. 
Why not? Why not want that? Stop trying to just be like, just, just give up the division to the Braves. Give it up and be like, yeah, we're just gonna go down ten games. We don't. I don't. I keep telling you guys in videos, we don't have the luxury to go down ten games to this team. We don't. We do not have the luxury to do that. I don't want. I don't want us to start off again twenty-two and twenty-nine, and have to go on a run in June, and 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 fire manager and have to be you no know, turn the season. No, I don't want that. This team is way too talented from top to bottom. Was not ranked by MLB Fangraphs, the number one bullpen in the MLB. That's something that we can disagree because I don't necessarily agree with that. Me being a Phillies fan, I don't think that the Phillies have the number one bullpen. They got some great pieces in that bullpen, but I think there's a couple other bullpens that are better. But regardless, we're a top five bullpen, and that, that I agree with. I think we're one of the best bullpens. I just don't think we're the best. But that's a story for another day. But think about it. We're ranked as number one bullpen in the MLB. We have one of the top five lineups in the MLB from top to bottom. We have, if not the top three rotation, definitely top five rotation in baseball. There are not many rotations that are better than that from one and five. It's not many. So, you know, a lot of guys five, four, f fifth game of a series of whatever, is a bullpen game, because they don't have the luxury of having five starters like we do right now. Yeah, Taiwan Walker is getting an MRI, but Spencer Turnbull was a starter last year in Detroit. They were going to start him in the bullpen this year. But the fact that Walker does not is going to start the season on the IEL gives him a chance to be our fifth starter. And he's been outstanding this spring. I wasn't necessarily necessarily sure about that signing. I thought it was maybe to see what they can get out of him, see if it was a depth piece or a bullpen piece, which they were planning on doing. But he's been phenomenal this spring. He was phenomenal. And if he's our fifth guy and he can have that level of production that he had in the spring or close to it, that's a deep rotation. Because I love Christopher Sanchez as our four. That guy... Eight up innings last year. He was a horse. He just got no run support last year at all. Ranger Suarez is our three. I mean, he might be the best three in the entire MLB, if not the best, along with Nathan Navaldi at the Rangers, having DeGrom and Scherzer ahead of him. But then you got Wheeler Nola at the top. You have those two guys pitching the series. Very likely you're going to win that series. More times than not. Now, when it comes to postseason baseball, man... We've gotten we got it was a it was a lull for a decade that the Phillies weren't making any noise that they were horrible that you knew coming into the season that they weren't going to do anything you knew it the last three years we've been so excited going into these seasons man Dave Zembrowski has turned this organization around starting off with that Bryce Harper signing Bryce Harper that was the first piece to start a winning culture here and they've established that. The Phillies have the best clubhouse culture in the MLB. The best. That is why they win when it counts. Because those guys are so close. Some people don't understand how much that matters. Those guys are best friends. Every single one of them. And it's evident on the field. It's evident when they play together. They have chemistry. They do. Now, when you look at around the league, what other teams in the National League are competing with the Phillies. Dodgers, Braves. Can you give me any other teams that the Diamondbacks might be good again? But I don't think that they're going to be anything special. I, I don't think they're going to make the deepest run in the postseason as they did last year. They shouldn't have even... They, they shouldn't have. They shouldn't have been there. Now, the Diamondbacks are, are... They're a team... They were like us in 2022. The only problem... The only thing with us, we had firepower. The Diamondbacks don't have firepower. They have Corbin Carroll, Cattell Marte. That is the really only firepower of stars that they have there. They got a bunch of really good, they have a bunch of good baseball players that know their role, that know the type of hitters they are. They're not trying to be hitters that they're not. And they work together. They had a great bullpen last year. They're going to be good. They're not the Dodgers, though. As much as I don't trust the Dodgers in the postseason, they're not the Braves either, as much as I don't trust them in the postseason. I don't think they're better in San Diego. And what the, the moves that the Giants have made this year, I don't think they're better than San, than San Francisco. Obviously, you got to put the stuff on the field, but at the same time, I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know. I don't think it's many teams in the National League that you can look at and like, wow, man, they might have a chance. Chicago might be sneaky. Chicago Cubs might be sneaky. They spent some money in the off season. They got some guys. They might be sneaky. However, I don't know, man. I, th I think the American League is way more wide open than the National League is. Way more. I think the American League has 
four or five teams that are just like, this this team can make a legit run. So us as Phillies fans, we should feel confident on what we have here. Everybody's like, oh, Dave Dombrowski ain't, ain't spent money in the offseason. That's fine. I know he got Trey Turner last year. I know he went out and got Castellano Schwarber the year before that. I know he spent money before, you know, but he did spend money. He got Nola. He, he extended Nola. He ex- sorry, he uh yeah, he gave Nola a new contract. He extended Wheeler. He extended Strom. He's just extending guys that's here. He's just giving those guys new contracts. That doesn't mean he's not spending money. He got with Merrifield, which I think is going to be a huge addition to that clubhouse. He's a perfect. This guy, his spring at bats were just straight up phenomenal. I mean, he was a professional at bat every single time. And he hit about 340 in the spring. He raked. And I don't expect him to be a starter. I really I don't expect him to be an everyday guy. I think he's going to be a guy that's going to definitely get a lot of at bats this year. But at the same time, we got to understand what we have here. This is the time to win now, which brings me to my next point. And I've mentioned it before in other videos. Johan Rojas is expected to be the starting center fielder on opening day. I think the kid is going to be really good. I think he's going to be good. I don't think he is where he needs to be right now in order to give the Phillies the best chance to win, especially in that nine hole. I know the nine hole isn't make or break. It isn't. It isn't like you're not living and dying by your nine hole. Pache is an elite defender. He is. I can give him that. He has been, since the start of the postseason last year, going into spring training this year, he has been bad at the plate. He's looked overmatched and overpowered. Can it change in the regular season? Of course it can. I'm not saying it can't, but I'm not banking on it right now. I would much rather have the guy like Pache who, yeah, he only hit 230 in the spring, but he had way less at-bats than Rojas did in the spring by a lot. And Pache did way more with those less at-bats than Rojas did with all of his. And Pache, the the whole Rojas is, you know, Pache's a step down from Rojas defensively. I don't think that that's the case. Rojas is elite defender. So is Pache. That was the reason he came up, he was such a highly touted prospect because of how ridiculous of a defender he was in the outfield. He played center field in 2020 for the Braves while they were in the NLCS. Like, he was out there. And, yeah, he wasn't hitting the ball. That's why they released him. So did the Oakland A's. They released him because he wasn't hitting. But he's always been an elite defender. Rojas isn't light years above Pache. As a defender, it's not like we have Castellanos. Like, it's not like Pache's Castellanos and not as a productive a hitter. No. Pache is an elite defender and center right and left. Can put him, you can put him wherever in the outfield. And if he's our nine hole, hitting 240, 250, yeah, we're not expecting him to hit 300. But if he hit anywhere from 240 to 260 in that range, that's, you know, being okay. Get on base, walk a few times, steal some bags. Isn't that better than 150 from Rojas and consistently punching out, not even getting out on base, getting on base? He's punching out. It's not like Rojas is working these phenomenal at bats and he's getting screwed over on the sixth or seventh pitch. No. He's getting overpowered. He's down in the count 0-2 as soon as he stepped into the box. Pache is up there more comfortable. It looks like he's looking for certain pitches, like he knows what he's looking for. And he's hitting the ball hard. Now Topper, as much, I, I give him some criticism sometimes. And yeah, he's a huge reason why this team made a huge turnaround in 2022 and has been the same since. He's a huge reason. He connects with the players, and I love the guy. I love the guy as a manager. Honestly, I do. But I think his lineup construction and his loyalty to certain guys gets him in trouble. For example, the Kimbrel thing. Yeah, Kimbrel was your guy all year in certain situations. But he wasn't working in the postseason. He blew game three against the Diamondbacks. He blew it. Yeah, Kirkering wasn't good either. But he's a rookie. Kimber was a vet. And what does Topper do in game four? Go to him again. Game four will forever haunt me as a Phillies fan. If we win game four, we win the series. 
But no. Thompson's loyalty to Kimbrough in those spots all season long drove him to make that decision one time that hurt him. And it happened. It happened again in 2022, previously. Alvarado was your guy out of that bullpen. He pulled Wheeler too early, in my opinion, against the Astros. And I know we're going back. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to set up an example here as to why sometimes I'm a little bit skeptical about Rob Thompson of certain decisions that he makes because of his loyalty to guys. Wheeler was taken out of that game way too early. I don't think he should have been pulled in the sixth inning. He brings in Alvarado against Jordan Alvarez. I don't mean to relive this. I know it hurts. Jordan Alvarez is one of the best left-handed hitters against left-handed pitchers, if not the best lefty-lefty hitter in the entire game. He hits 300 against lefties. He rakes against lefties. In the postseason especially, he's hit major home runs against left-handed pitchers, overpowering left-handed pitchers. But he's a freak of nature. But Thompson's like, I've gone to Alvarado every single time in this spot. I want to go to him again. And he went to him again. A lot of the strings that Thompson pulls works. Some of them don't. And some of them are in major spots. And that's what I'm concerned about. Is that if his loyalty to Johan Rojas, because he loves him so much, and he's supposed to be our starting center fielder, is going to get him in trouble and give him a longer leash than what he should. As I've said before, the Phillies' time to win is right now. Right now. They don't have the luxury of they don't have the luxury of letting Johan Rojas develop, especially as he if he's gonna come in in situations like he did in the playoffs in Game Seven with runners on base in the fourth inning, and you didn't pitch it for him. Was Pache gonna be a difference? Who knows? I trusted him more than Rojas, even Jay Cave. That wasn't the never big JK fan. He's all with the Rockies now. They traded him. He's never really the biggest JK fan. But at the same time, you got to do something different, man. You have to. And as far as lineup goes, too, I had a discussion with my friends earlier today. And they all disagree with me. And I've said in a previous video, Nick Castellanos, to me, should be the four-hole hitter in this lineup to start the season. And I'm not saying the lineup can't change, and I'm not saying you should stick with them all year. Because if, if production isn't there, obviously you got to make some switches. But JT Real Muto, yeah, he had, one, he had a home run today to end the, to end the spring off. Great for, good for him. I don't trust JT Real Muto, who has hits into a lot of double plays, to be the four hole hitter. Behind three guys who get on base a ton. The reason I say that I had a discussion with another friend of mine. That I think Nick Castellanos should be the four hole. Is because. Harper. Is probably not going to get a lot of pitches to hit regardless. Because they're going to always try to pitch around Harper. You never really run to throw Bryce. There's certain guys you don't just pitch to. Especially in certain situations. Harper, Judge, Freeman, Betts. Certain guys like that you don't just pitch to. He's going to get a lot of. Pitches off the play, they're going to try to get him chased. They're going to try to throw him a lot of off-speed. If they make a mistake, he's going to make them pay for it. However, Schwarber's going to get on base a ton. So is Trey, so is Harper. Castellanos, yes, he swings a lot out of the zone. But JT ain't, uh, JT ain't a selective hitter either. And JT, to me, is a worse two-strike hitter than Castellanos. Again, the whole notion is you want to get Castellanos more pitches to hit. This is the big leagues. These guys aren't getting certain pitches to hit like like little leagues. Like, oh, if this guy's the seven hitter, he's going to get more fastballs. It all depends on the situation. Who's behind you in the lineup? That's what that matters in the big leagues. What the situation is. Does it call for a fastball? Does it call for a curveball? Does it call for a slow? It's not like literally just because the eight, it's, you're the nine hole, you're going to get fastballs. No. It's not how that works. If you can't hit a fastball, you can't hit a fastball. But Castellanos can't hit fastballs. So pitchers don't want to throw him fastballs. The difference is, this spring, he's laid off a lot of those sliders out of the zone that we've seen him swing at in the past. 
And for me, stop being in the five hole, which he's probably going to be in the five hole. If I'm a pitcher, I don't want to pitch around Harper and Castellanos to then face Stott with runners on in scoring position. Because Stott is a professional bat as well. He's young, but he makes pitchers work. So why are you going to waste pitches to Harper? Which you are going to waste pitches to Harper. Then you're going to waste pitches to Castellanos. And then you're going to waste pitches to... Then you're going to have to face Stott. Also banking on the guys ahead of Harper to not be on base. You see what I'm saying? I think that being in the four hole gives Castellanos and what's stopped behind him gives Castellanos the best possible scenario to get fastballs. The difference is JT Real Muto does not hit the fastball as well as Castellanos. He doesn't. He strikes him he strikes out a lot on heaters, especially heaters up in the zone. JT is a guy that if he throw if they're throwing sliders in the zone, he's all over it. He's going to drive him the opposite way, or he's going to get him out in front, and he's going to pull one down the line for a homer. It's it's He has to get a fastball early in the count in a hitter's, in his in his zone to do damage with it. But if you get ahead with a couple pitches on the corners, you can get him with a fastball up in the zone or fastball in. It's hard to strike out Castellanos on a fastball. He rarely strikes out on a fastball. He strikes on, on a bunch of all speed. But I think Castellanos in the four hole, Stott in the five, is going to get Castellanos the most pitches to hit. That's what we want. If you put him in the seven hole, now you got Marsh, which I love Marsh. He's been good for us. And then you got Rojas. Who would you rather face? You're going you're gonna to go out there pitching, trying to get Castellanos to chase. Because he will chase. You're going to go up there, slider. I can I can kind of get away with throwing him a slider or throwing him a curveball first pitch. Maybe throwing him a changeup down and away, get back in the count. Throw a changeup down and in, maybe, because he's out in front of it. You know, like, there's certain ways to get out Castellanos. And if he has a guy behind him who's not as good a hitter, why would they pitch to him? Why? The whole point is getting Castellanos pitches to hit. Why would you put him in the seven hole and not get him pitches to hit? Well, he's not going to get pitches to hit. Now, th- that's the common, s- that's the sense that I have. That's the logic. I'm not saying that Castellanos is going to hit 330 and hit 30 homers and drive over 100. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, who you have behind him matters. If you have boom, if you have stop behind Castellanos, pitchers aren't going to want to face Harper, Castellanos, stop back to back. They're not going to want to waste pitches to those guys. Someone's going to get pitches to hit in those three guys. Someone. And you'd rather not give stop pitches to hit or runners in scoring position already. I don't know if I'm making any sense here. But think about this logically. Think about it logically. Whoever's in the four hole, to me, is in the biggest discussion. And whoever's in the nine hole. The nine hole, not so much. The four hole, obviously, is more important. I want a guy there who drove in over 100 RBIs last year, who was the lone all-star in our team. The only one. The only all-star on our team last year was Castellanos. And Kimbrel. But, you know, Castellanos was talking about position players here in the lineup. Why not have that guy protecting Bryce Harper, who's not going to get pitches to hit no matter who's behind him, but whoever's behind him, whoever's behind Stott, all right, so whoever behind Castellanos, who's going to be stopped, you want to get Castellanos as many pitches to hit as possible because no pitcher is going to want to be wasting 15 to 20 pitches on three batters. That's that's my take on the lineup. My lineup for opening day would be Schwarber, Trey, Bryce, Castellanos, Stott, JT, Boehm, Marsh, Pache. Those will be my nine. What I think it's going to be, what they've already kind of low-key said, it's Kyle, Trey, Harper, JT, Stop, Boom, Castellanos, Marsh, Rojas. I'm excited for the Phillies, man. We're going to see how this lineup plays out. And I hope I'm wrong. If that's the lineup and I and they go out there and rake, I'd happily be wrong because I want to see my guys win. But I'm just telling you what I feel, what my thought process is on it. You know, 
there's there's just I don't know, man. You know, I, I'm not I don't get paid to make those decisions. So whatever, All right? Now other things going on is do the Phillies go out go out there and get Montgomery? I don't think they do. I do not think they do. I think they should. He's my number one guy right now. The whole Trevor Bauer thing, I think that ship has sailed. As wishful thinkers as it was. I don't think he's going to play in the big leagues this year. Because if he was, why not play in, Why not has somebody taken a flyer on him for the league of the minimum, which he said he'll play for? Montgomery's still out there. If you were playing, paying all these big bucks to Yamamoto, you were the number one team that gave the most money to Yamamoto, and he said no. Why are we not throwing money to Montgomery, who was the number one on a World Series team last year? On the team that won the World Series? Why are we not doing that? His price has dropped a little bit. But if you were going to pay all that money to Yamamoto, why not give not even half to Montgomery? That doesn't make sense to me. Why he's still out there. Apparently, the Phillies aren't in talks. They, they haven't reached out to Scott Boris yet, which is his agent. But there's been some internal communications of whether we should go get him. I think they should. Because that solidifies as the best rotation in baseball. If he's your three, Rangers your four, Sanchez is your five. Three lefties, which, if that's the case, they'll probably... They'll probably have Turnbull instead of Sanchez and put Sanchez in the bullpen as a long relief guy. Either one. I don't know. It's kind of be weird to have five, I mean, three lefties in the rotation when there was a time when we had zero in the rotation. Um, but I think you should, I think they should do it. I think he's a stud. He's a professional. He's a workhorse. He's a guy that's going to fit right into this clubhouse. No baggage comes with him, quote-unquote. Like people are worried about with the Bauer thing. There's no outside noise that comes and ruins a clubhouse in a way. Why not go get him? He's a professional, man. He's a competitor. He's a guy that's... If if he's your three, that says a lot. That says a ton. So, you know... And then last thing that I'm going to talk about... The Phillies' schedule, I'm going to pull it up right here. I'm going to pull it up, who they start the season with. They start the season against the Braves. Three against the Braves. Yeah, tough series, but I feel confident at home, opening day, opening weekend. The Phillies should, I feel like the Phillies could win that series pretty good. Then you got the Reds. For three. I was not going to say it's an easy series. But it's a series you should win. You're better than that team. The Nationals for three. Should definitely win that series. The Cardinals. Who in my opinion are not going to be very good this year. That's for three. The Pirates for four. At home. I don't think the Pirates are going to be very good. Then the Rockies. And the Rockies, better than that team. White Sox, better than that team. Reds for four, again, better than that team. San Diego for three, yeah, it might be tough. Then the Angels for three. What? The Phillies' first month of the season, they could get off to a hot start. Hot start. They could get off to a start that we haven't seen. Because they started off poorly over the past few years. They started off very poorly. The Braves start off with us. Then they got the White Sox. Then they got Arizona. Then they got the Mets. Miami. Houston. Texas. Miami. Cleveland. Seattle. They have a much tougher schedule than we do. Division games are always tough. They're not, I don't think the Braves are just going to go out there and sweep the Mets. That, li- that lineup is pretty good. I don't trust the pitching, but that lineup is pretty good. They can score some runs. I don't think they're going to... Uh, the Arizona, like I said, they're going to be a good team. Seattle, Texas, Houston, 
they got some pretty good teams that they got to go through in the first month of the season. If the Phillies can start off hot, win these series, which they should. They should win all of these series. The only one that's in, up in the air is the Braves one because the Braves are a great team. But other than those, they, sh- they are favored in every, they should be favored in every single one of those series. They're better than all of those teams. And with everybody pretty much coming into the season healthy, there shouldn't be a question that we should start get off to a hot start in the month of April. And the, the Braves, they're going to have some guys to go through. They got the Rangers, they got the Astros. Yeah, we got them at some point in the season. But if we can start off and establish a lead in the division, I know a lead in the division in April doesn't mean you're you're going to win the division come September. It doesn't mean that. But it's about getting off to a hot start and telling these telling the Braves, telling the, every other team in the division and in the National League, we are here. We're sick about how these last couple years have gone. We've gotten so close and they haven't been able to finish. They were there in 2022. Got to game six when they, no one expected them to be there. It was a great run. Everybody was so, so proud of them. There came expectations in 2023. And they led a team that well, they were not that was not better than them beat them on their home field for two straight games. Clinching games. This year they should be coming hungry. Ready to go. Every single one of them. And I expect that. I think this clubhouse is ready to go. This organization is ready to go. The fans are ready to go. I think Thursday is going to be electric at that field. It's going to be electric. And I can't wait to see what we're going to do this year, man. I'm so excited. Let me know what you guys thought, what you guys think in the comments. All right? I'm recording another video tonight that probably is going to be up tomorrow with Brendan. He's going to be back. We're going to be discussing some topics all around the league. But as for the Phillies, man, get ready. We're going to have content all across this week talking about keys to the game. I'm probably going to put out a video on Wednesday or Thursday morning uh, talking about the keys to the series um, I'm going to be broadcast. I'm going to try to broadcast Thursday. I'm going to try to broadcast Thursday if I'm home from work in time. Um, if not, Saturday, Sunday, we're going to try to broadcast those games. All right. I just what you guys think in the comments as far as what I said in connection to the lineup, all that stuff that we talked about today. Any other topics you guys want me to cover before the season starts? Anything. Anything you guys want me to say, we're here. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time.